going to talk about the ultimate F word, family, and our relationship with it. And what is the purpose? I want to understand what is the purpose of being born into a family rather than just being dropped out and emerging from a flower? I mean, or, or being brought by a stork and just dropped down a chimney into some random house that maybe has one person or nobody. Yeah, it's interesting you used to say, you know, why would we, why would we manifest that way? Um, because I rather fancy sort of jaunting in like one of the tomorrow people. <laughs> where you just hold on to your belt and kind of arrive that yeah. you know in, in a slightly more self-sufficient way maybe one of the reasons is that when we arrive we can't walk and talk yeah that's quite inconvenient it's reasonably inconvenient isn't it I'm wondering if actually it's time to change that whole phenomenon and actually we adopt the Benjamin Button approach mm -hmm. And maybe we turn up fully mobile and capable physically. Sort of able to nip out for a kebab at will. <laughs> exactly. <It's> like, <laughs> oh, that, that birthing process was an ordeal. <laughs> I need a kebab. <laughs> First thing that obviously passed across my mind on arrival is where is the local kebab shop? And um, we could cut out the middleman and just go straight for the the boozy night and the kebab couldn't we and um we could and a bit of a nightclub cut out a lot of potentially overly influential programming in the process really influential programming and i'm guessing that you know since we might want to trust that it's a perfect design if there is such a thing i'm wondering if <laughs> that highly influential programming is just preparation for challenging things or experiences we face in life well cause or effect chicken or egg really it's true because one wonders whether some of the rather interesting somewhat <laughs> limited at times programming that may knit its way in very early on whether it's the cause or effect of many of the issues that we face during our lives so um I guess we have to arrive in a tribe somehow, just really to be fed and watered, a bit like a, a seed of a flower really needs a little bit of tending, I suppose. Um, but maybe the purpose is no more than that, just to grow us up to a point at which we can fly. Feed, feed ourselves. Feed, fly, and other things beginning with F. <laughs> <laughs> Figure things out. Fumble Figure around. Th Figure things out. Maybe we're more directive in the process and maybe we actually choose maybe we think okay if i'm gonna drop back in to this physical experience then maybe i want to prepare myself mentally to realize something or to learn something or to create something and maybe to do that i'm going to want this kind of experience as a result we direct it and just forget that we have. I think it's like the generation game. Do you think? I do. I think what happens is, <laughs> in order to get to the point where you're looking at the conveyor belt, <laughs> remarkable assortment of toasters, socket yeah. sets, and teddy bears. Yeah. In order to get that far, you sort of have to get through various layers of the game. And, and, and maybe level one, if we want to use some gaming parlance, is family. Is family. The thing is, though, family sort of, it's kind of the theme throughout all the levels. Yes. I mean, I've never computer gamed. Well, I have, but not since Chucky Egg in the 1980s. And I'm pretty sure that once you've gone through a level and you've, you know, picked up your merit badge or your golden star or whatever it is you pick up, I mean, you want to be done with that level, don't you? What you sort of do, and yet maybe the whole F thing, family thing, mirrors energy in as much as there aren't necessarily discrete and distinct layers. It's more intertwined than that. So, it's more subtle than that, like the subtle bodies that move yeah. in and out of each other. Maybe this sort of arrival on stage with Brucey and Anthea, <laughs> stage one, give us a twirl, off we go. Um, maybe you just take 
essences of that through with you as each layer unwinds what if that time period let's call it a, a dimension if that dimension of growing up with family is not actually physically real at all and it just happens in our mind and what if it's just the most intense way we can mirror back all aspects of ourselves in such a way that we notice them perhaps it's actually like you know the house of horrors in the mirrors <laughs> 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 where you go in and in one you're really really wide and the other one you're really really short <laughs> and it's sort of weird mirrors reflecting aspects of ourselves back and then when we sort of get to the point where we can fumble around and figure things out we pop out into maybe that's when we're born into physicality maybe everything else is just in our minds so a sort of hall of mirrors type house of horrors really yes yeah <laughs> without the train You've got to walk through it. There's no easy path. Nice snail's pace. So not so much the generation game as really the house of the early house of horrors. Um, just as part of the process, I quite like that idea. I think they're quite amusing. You see, they are quite funny. Absolutely. And I mean, you know, those ones where you've got a really squished face and the big teeth. Um, or maybe that's just me. I mean. <laughs> maybe that's what we really look like. <laughs> maybe that is me. This idea that we're just sort of mirroring back in a way that we can't possibly miss it. It's so obvious. It's like the ABC of this is you. It, I like that perspective, although we probably have met enough people to know that maybe not everybody sees it that way. So maybe it only becomes a very jolly, jaunty, funny generational game hall of mirrors when you're able to somehow separate from that. It depends on whether it's the funny House of Horrors or if it's a less amusing House of Horrors whilst you're in it. No, it just, based on your experience. And then Fluffy, maybe... Fluffy family, you remain completely invested and in the picture. Yes, and, it, and, and sometimes you disappear. I mean, maybe there's a mirror in there where you can't actually see yourself. I think it could be like Mr. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I loved the caveman, one of those. Yeah, Fantastic. Mr. Ben, brilliant. Mr. Ben, so you, you, you pop in one side from behind the curtain into the booth, into, yes. the, fam into the family booth, the changing room. Yes. Walk out through the mirror. Suddenly you might be with dinosaurs dressed as a caveman or something else. I quite like the spaceman. Yeah, floating out the other side oblivious to anything so maybe the, the family changing room cubicle is a yeah. wonderful vortex through which to expand and experience your inner caveman it's definitely about expansion and it's definitely about perspective and it's definitely about finding the fulcrum if we're on f words of duality finding the ability to hold lots of different perspectives as equally real so is it in some way a little bit about identity it's definitely about identity so do you think it might be as another another layer just might be it's a perfect vehicle to work out who the hell we are yeah i suppose if we go back to the computer game that i'm not going to really be able to understand if we look at it as, you know, once we've separated from the first level, or picked up our first merit badge, then every layer beyond that is a degree of separation, which gives us a new perspective from the outside as well as the inside, which gives us a new way to expand and hold lots of different truths in place at one time. I like that idea. So you can be none of it and all of it simultaneously exactly well I, same, I, I, yeah. i'm thinking of another f word for family now i'm thinking which is funky funky yeah funky and fine hmm. and formative <laughs> all, all of the above <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ultimately funny <laughs> very funny yeah i think this is where the phrase a little bit too close for comfort 
comes from if we do accept the idea that family is a very very close clear mirror image of ourselves or one of ourselves or a part of ourselves then sometimes that's too close for comfort yeah it makes me want to say fudge <laughs> fudge and farewell and I wonder if we also loop through it I can't remember which psychologist Tolving that was it he said time travels in a loop and I wonder if in each level you're traveling back to the point of being inside again to see if it feels different so maybe that's the purpose of family gatherings so maybe as you sort of turn up for various family gatherings whether that be you know birthdays or celebrations throughout the year then maybe that's the sort of loop of time where you get to understand whether or not you feel differently when you're inside and whether there has been expansion or whether you're in the same place it's it's a good position from which to look for perspective but I'm wondering about the concept of families feeling quite gluey they kind of bind people don't they sometimes if we're going to look at it from the gluey bindy attachment vibe it does tend to be the way it goes isn't it it does not, not for everybody but for many it does and I suppose attachment is probably you know the highest level of the game or non-attachment is the highest level of the game the most challenging maybe the ultimate test to get you know the big star at the top whatever that would be used to be a golden egg but I'm sure it's different now would actually be the ability to be completely unattached to family in a loving way yeah I mean I can see that being the ultimate prize don't know why I'm thinking bullseye winning the speedboat it could be the speedboat (laughs) when you when you hit the bullseye you get the the lovely speedboat oh yes come on bully from the landlocked grandma it's it's what I've always wanted Jim um but yeah it the idea I think of being able to be part of a family enjoy the connection without you know more of that sort of weird glue they give you in infant school that can easily be peeled apart rather than the gorilla glue and the you know the super glue I think that I think I smelled too much of that when I was a child which is what sent me mad (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm still quite tempted Mm. to sniff the odd tube of yoohoo right now yeah absolutely and they called it paste which was misleading yeah, well, do you remember they had that fish paste one? Very, fish paste very. Glue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you used to make papier-mâché hats with fish paste glue and you'd take them home and, some, and in the car, everyone would be like, what is that smell? It's like, oh, <laughs> my, it's my papier-mâché hat. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. No, <laughs> the, the perfect Never childhood. <laughs> perfect childhood. Yeah, not good on a sunny day. Maybe, maybe the glueiness is the, the trick to all of this. So maybe... I'm clearly very attached to the idea that, you know, we come in and it's all in our mind and it's not real up to the point that we can figure things out and fudge along on our own fudginess. Maybe the end of that journey is the ability to hold family in physical reality and see them as their own individuals rather than a part of us. I like that idea. I quite like the idea potentially of expanding the idea of family because it would appear that sometimes we have different rules depending on the label we attach to groups of people. So if we can knock the label off the family unit, it's just energetic, it might be more beneficial to see everyone as family or no one as family. Yes, the ultimate attachment, non-attachment. Everyone as family could drive some of our more determined archetypes I think well maybe it's just it would, it would be more useful to us to see it merely as classification you know cucumber or marrow you know broad bean or spud what does distinguish a courgette from a marrow size good to know <laughs> <laughs> just <checking. And> dressing <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed it's all just classification I mean family is different for everyone you're right I mean it's about the image it represents and the feeling it engenders I think 
Well, this is it, because we may have conditioned ourselves into beliefs about what families mean that are not true at all. Yeah. And I think that may be the case. Obviously. And obviously, I discovered this week that since I have an RH negative blood type, I'm actually an alien anyway. So who's my family? Strangely, I am also Lisa's negative. Hello, family. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, let's get in a room and fight and judge each other. Yeah, let's. <laughs> I'm going to overly attach to your behaviour and then get in the middle and make it all my business and then pretend it was all about me. Yeah, there you go. So we're not stereotyping families at all here. No. Um, or basing on our own experiences whatsoever. Whatsoever. But it's, it's kind of interesting that maybe on some level, because in some weird way, they may have been ever so slightly responsible for our survival early doors, that, that somehow they become more than weighted in terms of boundaries and also this debt of whatever that might be means yes. that, that our behavior is overly influenced unconsciously because somehow those efforts <laughs> kept us alive <laughs> <laughs> for long yeah. enough to go to the kebab shop so it could well be unconsciously our elastic band is slightly longer our bungee yeah. rope is a bit longer for them for that on that and basis I I think the the family bungee is is longer and wider in some cultures as well. Gotcha. So in some, I mean, in some cultures, for example, there is an overt admission that I looked after you until you could go and have a fizzy drink and a kebab. As a result, and I paid for it to get you to a place where you were stable enough to look after yourself and as a result you will look after me in old age so do you think there's a subliminal lifetime contract agreement in some way that somehow definitely and I think there are several I believe firstly that every individual has the I'm going to be unable to look after my physical needs um, at the beginning and at the end of my life as in, I'm, I'm going to allow myself to re-explore that baby-like experience at the end of my life because I'm going to enjoy that. I think there's something enjoyable about that. So I think there's that one running. And then I think there's also the, I did this, so you have to do that, tit for tat. I, for sure. I like to think that this is like a sort of pre-production planning meeting of a theatre going on mm -hmm. on the other side of the curtain. Mm -hmm. where all the actors and the, the players get in the room. It's kind of like auditions, <laughs> sort of X Factory meets, you know, what's that Lloyd Webbery blokey sort of Cameron Macintosh type behind the scenes. All the lovies are there and all the drama queens are there and all the villains come in, you know, pantomime dames, the booing and the hissing and, and the heroes and the princesses. <laughs> Definitely. And there we all are, <clears throat> assembled behind the curtain. And we say, OK, then <laughs> let's get casting. Yeah. And which one would you choose? Would you choose to be Little Red Riding Hood or the wolf? Do you know, the minute you said that, I was thinking I'd come a Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, perhaps I already have. <laughs> well, yeah, I definitely come as the donkey in Shrek. <laughs> I, maybe we come as both on a number of occasions. I mean, I loved dressing up as a child. I had a nice dressing up box and I quite like this idea that actually on the other side of the veil is exactly as you say it's a bit like the drama school waiting to see who's going to get the part mm -hmm. and then looking at the outfits going oh I quite fancy the wolf outfit this time or or maybe I quite fancy the hero outfit this time or maybe I fancy this one and maybe you know you get given a number of different outfits that you can utilize throughout your physical experience and there's some, always somebody at the back going, oh, I really wanted to get that part. And then, so, you know, there's a nice motherly and fatherly figure somewhere going, well, never mind. Next round, you can have that part. It's a lovely idea, isn't it? Next movie I'm casting myself in is Grease. Are you going to go for the obvious part or are you going to enjoy being the hair of John Travolta? I'd love to be his <laughs> hair, to be honest. Chest hair, preferably. Really? I, thought I, was, I was quite admired the fact that that comb came out about 493 times throughout that film. There, there, there was a lot of kind of gorgeousness in the hair department. 
on a number of those actors. I wouldn't yeah. quite mind. I think Rizzo appeals. Yes. Oh, fantastic yeah, legs. Fantastic. Look at the legs on that woman. So it could, she could, it could be that for me. I like this idea of, of getting to play different roles. And, and as we get to play different roles, we sort of get to get a little bit of artistic license and freedom to explore them and make them our own. Well, we certainly get to experience the gambit of emotions. And, you know, that's all fun and games. Hmm. So families then, by design, perfectly designed. Without a doubt, I'm convinced they're perfectly designed by us. I think we choose. And I think we say, oh, yeah, we'll have a bit of that and a bit of that and a bit of that in our little mixing pot. So you don't think the casting director could accidentally say, oh, we're short of a player at, uh, at the local Roxy in Scunthorpe. You better get yourself. Get your glitter on. Get your glitter on. There's a, a glam rock production of Frankenstein going on over there and you are needed. Oh, look, I definitely feel there's a bit of a, you know, I'm volunteering, don't really mind this this time round. I think there's several, I think we get several goes. I think the first time we're probably a bit, you know, demanding. I want it this way. This is who I want. And then I think by the time we've been around a few times, we're kind of like, yeah, okay, I'll show up. You want me to be a fishing cat? Is that a starring role? Okay, well, never mind. Okay, there's only about six of us. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll be the tail on the donkey. I just, I wonder perhaps whether um, at times it feels as though one might have agreed to a part and with all good intention, assured oneself that you would read the script and then you just turn up having left the script stuffed down the back of the sofa. Well, undoubtedly, I've been guilty of that several times. Yeah. mainly because I never read the instructions when I go to Ikea. It's a bit like that image for me of a donkey in the middle of the ocean standing on a door going, how on earth did I get here? Mm. Absolutely, um, for sure. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I always start the jigsaw puzzle without the box lid. Yeah, exactly. I wonder what the... <laughs> <laughs> Who needs instructions or a picture? Mm. Just go with the flow. I'm sure there's a little bit of, oh dear... I'm not sure I meant to do this. Uh, but then again, you know, maybe there's a little bit of, maybe there's a bit of a bravado up there in the casting room. Yeah, I can do that. Can you horse ride and tap dance? Oh, yes. a million times. <laughs> At the same yeah. time. At the same time, whilst fencing. Yeah. Yeah, Can absolutely. do all of that. I'm, I'm your man. That's yeah. definitely the part for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, schoolgirl, schoolboy era. I like it. Mm. I upped my CV again. Damn it that'll learn me <laughs> and the next time you turn up with your cv and it just says person <laughs> <laughs> oh not even yeah or on, on mine never knowingly undersold yeah so you know families could ultimately then be the the most perfectly and exquisitely designed by oneself and perhaps yeah and a little bit of help from yeah. a an esteemed casting director I think I might sack my manager this time round. Uh, well, it, it begs the question, do we need one? Probably do we need not. to give our 10% to the manager? Definitely not. Perhaps we're, we'll just, we'll multitask, take on the whole gambit. Maybe next time I'm going to get a really, really high caliber manager. Oh, what a good idea. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to get myself, you know, a wingding, get you to the top. Do not pass go, do not collect £200 straight to the top. Yeah, and I shall celebrate great by becoming the world's largest and most perfect Brussels sprout. Beautiful. That will be my next role. Sounds absolutely ideal. Could be dodgy if it's Christmas. <laughs> it could be, but then I'm thinking that people might imagine that if, it's, if I'm enormous, I wouldn't taste that good. You could be right. And yet. And yet I could be horribly wrong and then realise that, you know, I'm in bedazzled and I've got to be a bit more specific about what I wish for. It might look absolutely delicious to a brontosaurus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you know, I wonder if there's a few dinosaurs up there waiting to come down. I've they, been they've been on the... quite a few. I've, in fact, I've been on the board with quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine there's a few. They're like, oh, gosh, we've been on the sidelines for so long now. Come on. Surely it's our turn again. They're, they're, <laughs> they're in the wings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Warming Some, up. 
<laughs> I'm sure there's a T-Rex ballet dancer in there somewhere waiting for a lead role in Swan Lake. Gorgeous little pink tutu. A few dinosaurs singing the scales, warming up for yeah. another production of uh, The Sound of Music. I, I think so. <laughs> Let's get one with a really big cast because we all want to go this time. Oh, Les Mis, that's what they want. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so all in all, designed by us, for us, in a lovely way, with the help of an esteemed casting director, sometimes we may be asleep when the casting instructions are being read. And as a result, find ourselves in a position where our CV may have depicted something that wasn't quite suitable. All in all, quite expansive. Quite expansive. And there's nothing in the rule book that says we can't write our own play. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure we all have. Hmm. So I quite like that idea, actually. They're all right on balance. I'm all right with it. I think I'm 100% convinced I firmly chose all of my family. Here we all are in our weird wonderfulness. Yeah, wonderful families, perfect vehicles for acting out, <laughs> expanding, and- um, Our dealing, deepest, darkest desires. Absolutely right, and dealing with any little karma drama. We should get a coffee cup with karma drama written on it. All sorted, families in a nutshell, done. Wonderful.